Welcome to the local campaign. Tonight we are presenting the debate for the candidates in Ward 21, Rideau Goulburn Ward. I'll introduce them to you in a moment, but first let me explain how the debate is going to work. We will start with opening statements, 60 seconds in length, one minute each for the two candidates. We'll do those in the order that was drawn at random before our telecast. And then we'll move into a series of debates about important topics in Rideau Goulburn and throughout the city of Ottawa. For each of the debates, I'll start with a question directed at one of the candidates. That candidate will have 45 seconds to answer the question, then we'll open it up to a few minutes of debate between the two candidates, and then we'll go back to the person to whom the question was originally directed, and that candidate will have 30 seconds to wrap up on that topic. We'll move through a number of different topics that way. We may also have time for some more rapid fire questions where I'll simply ask a question and give each of the candidates an opportunity to respond. And then we'll do the closing statements in the reverse order of the opening statements. So let's meet the candidates who are seeking your vote on October 22nd in the municipal election in rideau Goulburn. First of all, Scott Moffat and as well, David Brown. Welcome to both of you. Thank you for joining us today. We will begin with the opening statements and we'll start with Scott Moffat. Go ahead. You have one minute. Thank you. It's great to be here, Mark. I appreciate the opportunity to, to speak to your audience about the 2018 election. I have the pleasure of serving Rita Goldberg for the last eight years on City Council. And in that time, we've managed to move major files ahead. We've managed to invest in infrastructure renewal. There's always more to do and we need to stay focused on that but also embracing some of the growth that we've seen in our communities and our villages and what that growth brings. Uh, business sustainability, new parks, uh, new amenities for, for constituents in those communities. And also from a citywide perspective, I've had the privilege of taking a leadership role on several files uh, throughout the city that impact not just rural Ottawa, but also the city as a whole. I think that's an important position for any councillor to take is that your role is not just a ward councillor, but it's being a city councillor and looking at things beyond the boundaries of your ward. And that's the intent to carry that forward into the next term of council. Okay, thank you. David Brown, you're next. Go ahead, you have one minute. Hello, I'm David Brown and I'm running to be your next councillor for Rideau Goulburn Ward. Knocking on doors for the past several months, I've spoken with hundreds of residents who are tired of yearly tax increases and receiving services that fall far below their expectations. Residents want a councillor who will actually fight for rural priorities, and this is a change that I can promise I will deliver as your next councillor. Okay, thank you. We will move now to some debates on important topics for Rito Goulburn and for the entire city. And I'll start with a question to Scott Moffat. You'll have 45 seconds to answer this question. Your ward has been growing at a pretty significant rate recently. I think there are some residents who are concerned that the growth has been too rapid. What measures would you put in place to manage and control development over the next four years? So I will refute that somewhat. Uh, the growth has not been that rapid in Rito Goulburn. Uh, we've seen developments in Mantic and Richmond. The Richmond hasn't really started yet. They've only have a couple homes uh, built for models. Uh, Richmond, or sorry, Mantic has been relatively slow. Uh, maybe we've just accelerated in the last couple of years to maybe 30 to 60 units a year. Uh, as we go forward, there is, there is caps set on what they can do in Manatech. In Richmond, it's really the market will, will guide that growth. In other communities like Cars and North Core and Munster, growth is relatively stagnant. Uh, there is some homes getting built, but it's not exactly, uh, it's nothing that's overbearing. It's nothing that we can't handle in the community. And I think that we just need to keep with that pace and then we see the, the benefits from that growth. Okay, it's open to uh, both of you now on the subject of uh, development and growth. Sure, I mean, I think the focus, I think the focus needs to be on, on what that growth can do for your community. You look at a community like Manitick, we're seeing some vacancies in the middle of town. It's not necessarily that the businesses have left the village, it's that they've relocated. And we want to find ways to, to bring more into the community, uh, bring more housing into the community, more people living actually in the core. We've got a group together working on the, uh, on the village core revitalization. It's a task force that's set up to see how we can generate more people actually living, working, and uh, shopping in the court using the, using the amenities that we have today. But I, I think one of the problems with the growth that we are experiencing is that the city infrastructure isn't being expanded before those developments go in. Uh, touching on a comment uh, Councillor Moffat made about Richmond, the current Richmond development plan says that 70% of the homes will be built out in the development before Richmond experiences any increase uh, in the roads growth, uh, extending the transportation network in the village. 
that's not fair to residents who live in these villages to experience, in some cases, thousands of additional vehicles on the roadways while they continue to try to live their lives so that in villages. The way that live. growth will happen is when that growth comes in, we'll end up identifying funds for expansion of roads. We already have a plan to expand per street to four lanes out to Eagleson. That'll help more traffic but get to Eagleson. But not until 70 percent of the homes are built out. We're yeah, waiting so that's, too that's, long. A, that's an evolving plan, right? So the secondary plan is something that sets out growth for the next number of years. But as that growth comes, we adjust that. We adjust the transportation master plan every five years. We adjust the official plan every five to ten years. These are constantly moving documents. They're, but the city needs they're to take fluid a, documents. But so the city needs to take an approach where we're not waiting to have these grow over time as development comes in. If villages are going to continue to expand in Rideau Goulburn Ward, as they will, Roads need to be built ahead of time. If you go anywhere in the United States, I know Florida is uh, one good example. Last time I visited there, roads were in place. City services were ready to go before housing developments went in. I think Ottawa needs to adopt a citywide policy to put that expanded infrastructure in sooner in the development growth process. Growth should pay for growth. Current taxpayers yes. shouldn't be shouldering the burden I of growth. I absolutely so agree. with growth built into the development charge bylaw, which is what we're doing in Manistique and Richmond, mm -hmm. will ensure that the growth actually pays for growth and we can adjust that as we go forward as well, the growth comes on It needs to be a board. lot sooner in the process before that goes on. Okay, Scott Moffat, I asked you the question. You get the final 30 seconds on this. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think the key thing when you're talking about that is that there's, uh, there are identified changes in what we're doing and how we're going to embrace growth. You look at Olverson Road expansion, that's happening right now with a roundabout at Olverson Road, Hope Side Road, the expansion of Hope Side Road and, and Olverson Road and West Hunt Club. And then you look at Manitick, you look at the plans that we have to put a roundabout at Barnesdale and Prince of Wales, to add turning lanes to Prince of Wales and, and Bankfield, future plans for roundabout realignment of First Line Road. We're looking at how that brings it in and we are actually addressing those going forward. Okay, we'll stop there and move on to the next topic. I'll direct a question to David Brown, and you will have 45 seconds to start things off. Have the caps on property tax increases over the past few years put too much pressure on city services? No, I, I don't believe that the cap on property taxes have put a squeeze on city services. I think the city needs to do a lot more with the taxes they bring in. Assuming that every year there's going to be another tax increase on another tax increase on another tax increase isn't fair to taxpayers. And I think it provides a false sense of security for the bureaucracy because they know more money is going to come in next year which will provide more money for them to play with. I think the city needs to go back and do another review of city services to see where we can make improvements in city services without coming back at a higher cost to taxpayers. Every time the 2% tax increase comes in, that brings in 26 million new dollars for the city on average. Where's all that money going? Okay, it's open to both of you on this now. A lot of it goes to staff. I think we know that. There's a, there's, we have collective bargaining agreements that are generally favorable around the 2% range, but some of them, police and fire, usually come in around 3%. So we know where some of that funds go. Uh, of course, with the extra urban sprawl, we also see pressures there in Barhaven, Orleans and Canada. More distance to travel pipes, more, run, more distance to run buses. Um, the reality is a 2% cap has been manageable, but we've but also seen some falters. It's 2% on 2% on 2%. On the property on 2%. Right. It's a That's compound what that rate. Means. No, and no, no one, I don't think anyone's debating that. Yeah. But what you also saw in, in 2008, 2009, 2010 was 4.9, 3.9, 3% tax, 3.7% tax increases. So we brought that down into a place that's more manageable, more predictable for the resident. But the current city but then plan also is reducing to staff in 2016, we reduced mm -hmm. 300 to three, two to 300 senior level positions. That saved $20 million annually. So you can keep cutting, so you can go slash and burn. No, I'm can't. not advocating for slash and burn, Scott, but I think there's an opportunity for the city to go back in and look at freeing up more of that money. If the majority of the so tax exactly? increase, if the, if the majority exactly? of the tax go, go increase, through, tell me what please let me finish, please let me finish. I, I, I just if the majority of the tax saying. increases of the 2% of that 26 million is going to pay for staff, why can't the city look at reducing staff a little bit further or looking at which maybe we've done consistently every single year since 2012. Why have we not kept going? Stopping at so the... So we did every year since 2012. This is 2018. Every single year keep, since 2018. Let's keep going. If we can free more... Six straight years. If we can free more money up... The bureaucracy of the city hall. If we can free up more money to provide better services to residents in Ottawa, I think we should do that. The, the approach so you that you're taking... So we should keep doing what we've been doing? Okay. Absolutely. That's good. Keep going. Keep cutting. So you and agree with what I've been doing as councillor for the last six years? That's good. I don't disagree with everything you've been doing. But Scott, 
if $26 million every year is coming in to the city, brand new money, and the vast majority of that is going to pay for city staff, do you not think that's a problem? Can we not look at continuing to increase city services? I know most residents in our area want better roads funding. They want more money redirected to roads. Which is what we're doing every single year and we have since 2011. But we have a, ten, we have a $70 million annual deficit Which we for approved, funding. Which we, we approved a plan to over reduce that gap. Over 10 years, right. over 10 Between years. Now in 2027, we're gonna add $70 That's million dollars annually. That's not responsible. A 10 year plan, taxpayers expect that the city will look after our public assets. And what I council, next term of council is going to take what, a hard look at how we can advance that plan. What council has done is said we'll fix it over the next 10 years. That needs to be filled far beyond that. Well, we're spending. We're still okay. spending $125 million dollars annually. Uh, David yeah. Brown, I asked you the question. You get the last 30 seconds on this. What Councillor Moffat didn't mention was that uh, this year in 2018, the federal government will be giving the city of Ottawa $56 million in the federal gas tax fund, from the federal gas tax fund. The majority of that money is going to be spent purchasing new buses for OC Transville. That's $56 million that's not going to fixing Ottawa's roads. It's a citywide issue. $56 million that's not going towards fixing roads. It's a shame. All right, we'll move to the next question now, which I'll direct to Scott Moffat. Uh, as you know, the uh, provincial government has imposed some changes on Toronto City Council. Uh, I think a lot of Ottawa residents are asking questions about the future of Ottawa City Council, whether it will be affected, whether something might uh, come from the provincial government on that, or whether change might come from within. So would you support any changes to how City Council is structured, including term limits or a reduction in the number of city councillors? So we have a ward ward boundary review coming up in 2015, so we're, uh, sorry, 2019. We did one in 2015, but it didn't get the job done. So we're looking at what we can do in the next, uh, before the next term of council, before the next 2022, uh, to determine do we have the right balance. Right now we have development in Rita Goulburn that belongs in Barhaven. We have development in Rita Goulburn that belongs in Stisville. We need to revise those boundaries. Uh, that has to happen. I don't believe a reduction in council makes sense. I think that's that's less representation for the residents. I don't think that's what we bargained for. We already we already got that amalgamation. We don't need to do it any further. In terms of term limits, I've never been for term limits. I believe that term limits are set by the voter. I mean, I've always said I don't think you know serving more than 12 years is that productive. But at the same time, I think you need to okay. manage that as to. Uh, it's open to both what, of you now. You can keep you, going. Uh, going forward, I mean, if you think that if you think that your councillor has been there for too long, then you have that every opportunity every four years to go and address that need. Um, I don't believe that term limits set uh, a good example. I think you're constantly going to have this changeover of new councillors. Four years, the first four years is a huge learning experience. Any councillor will tell you that. So if you go for four years of new, four years of experience, and then you're going back to a new councillor, there's that constant revolving door of brand new councillors coming in. I think the leadership and the corporate knowledge will be drained, and that will be a detriment to the residents of Ottawa. Which is absolutely something we have to make sure we protect uh, rural Ottawa from. Rural Ottawa has four councillors speaking on its behalf. The Balance of City Council is there to serve urban Ottawa. We don't want to see a situation where rural Ottawa has fewer representatives. The good news the is majority we don't have to worry about that because there's actually a court decision back in 2005 that sets aside that, so we don't have to worry about losing rural representation on council. We have to be careful though. I, yes, councillor, I, I don't have a rebuttal for that. I, I, I want to make sure that rural Ottawa doesn't have any less representation. But moving forward, we need the rural re representatives to actually fight on our behalf. Right now, we see a case where it's go along to get along. Councillors aren't fighting back. Rural councillors aren't fighting for the gas tax funds to be spent on roads instead of buying new buses for OC Transpo. Uh, rural residents tell me every day at the door they don't feel like their concerns are being heard at City Hall. They feel that the, the go-along to get-along approach isn't benefiting us. I disagree with the go on to get on. I disagree that that's actually what's happening and you know better than to say that that's what's happening because no. you worked in the environment. Um, and I believe leadership, that. I leadership say comes it. not from fighting but from leading and you don't lead a community. But you don't lead a city by fighting leading. with other members of council. Rural councillors are not Four leading. members of the five member Agriculture Rural Affairs Committee sit on the Finance and Economic Development Committee. Four members of Agriculture Rural Affairs Committee are chairs of major committees or, or boards at the City of Ottawa. We have a, a significant role in how the City of Ottawa operates today in the bureaucracy and how we lead the bureaucracy and how we lead council. 
those four members, myself, Stephen Blay, Eli and Thierry, three rural members. And are we always going to be guaranteed that those rural members sit on those what committees? you're talking about now, and I'm talking about now as well. So if you want to talk about what's going to happen 20 years from now, I'm talking about the status of our rural members now, and we are major leaders at but City Council. But if we're major leaders now, what will we be tomorrow, next term, the term after? If you re-elect me, yes. Okay. Scott Moffat, you get the last uh, 30 seconds on this. Again, representation is key. And representation is more than just about rural, suburban, or urban. It's citywide. You need to have councillors that are focused more than just in their, their ward boundaries, but across the city. And residents need to know that they can get to their councillor. Pre-amalgamation, Rideau Township and Gover Township represent a mayor and four councillors each. That's down to me. That's down to the councillor, whether that was Glenn Brooks, myself, whoever comes next. We cannot reduce that any further, and that's the same. Barhaven, 60,000 okay. people. It cannot be reduced any further. All right, thank you. David Brown, next question is to you. Uh, you have ad advocated that City Council should move uh, more directly to determine the right waste disposal system for our community. What specific ideas do you have in that area? You've got 45 seconds. Well, right now, uh, Trail Road Waste Facility is home in uh, Rideau Goulburn. Hundreds of thousands of tons of garbage are dumped in the Trail Road Waste Facility every single year. For the last three years, Council has made no movement towards a more sustainable, environmentally friendly solution. Many options, and one I, I believe in, is incineration. Incineration is not the 50-year-old smokestacks billowing smoke into the atmosphere. There are modern incinerating facilities that exist just down the road in Durham Region. It produces eight and a half million dollars worth of electricity. It's a zero wastewater facility. And the Durham Region model uses curbside collection just like we do here in Ottawa. And that's something I'd like to okay, see. Okay, it's open to both of you now. Yeah, I think the future of garbage has to be a key priority. I mean, trail or landfill was mentioned. We had Plasco. It failed. You know, I, I had a motion that brought that to an end, December 31st, 2014. Council should have spent more time in the last four years looking to the future. Well, you sit on the Environment Committee. Yeah, Why do. didn't you push that? I do. I it, do sit on the Environment the Committee. The dump is in our ward. Hundreds of thousands of tons of garbage are being we, buried there every year. We tied our, we hitched our wagon to the province and the Waste Master Plan. That was a mistake. We need to do more on that. We mentioned the Durham facility. And just on the, on the Durham facility, think about that for a second. We pay approximately $80 on our rates a year on our taxes. The Durham facility costs $300 million capital. Plasco is going to be zero capital. It's the stage one LRT that only those that will Three, use it will benefit from. Well, so we're talking about garbage right now. $300 million capital. $300 million then in extra tipping fees. So their tipping fees in the Durham and York area went up by double. Our, our garbage rate would increase from $80 to approximately $150 so, per person. So let's that's a, look that's at a making... 5% tax let's increase look at just for incineration that, alone. Let's look at making that plan better. If we know someone else has made mistakes, then let's learn from those. That's the wise thing to do. But just saying, well, the fees might go up or there's a problem over there doesn't completely shut down the discussion. In no, 2015, no one's ever shut down the discussion. In 2015, council said that they next. would wait until the garbage or the green bin program rather was sorted out before they started moving forward. No, we said why, we would wait for the waste master plan to be finalized at the province. Why have we not done any work between now and then? Everyone produces garbage every day. Why have we waited for years to do nothing? By the time we cancel moving again, it'll be through another term of council. This is a program that should have been sought after over this term of council. As Councillor Moffat said, more should have been done. And he's absolutely right, but he sits on that committee and he hasn't pushed that to the forefront knowing that every day hundreds of tons of garbage are being dumped in our ward. Why is that accessible? So when I was chair, in, vice chair of that committee in the term prior, we did a lot on this file and we moved a lot forward. That was the last term. Yeah, I'm, I understand that, term? but when you're counselor for eight years, it's the whole thing. I don't just break things apart in year by year. The reality is there's more that can be done. We need to look at models similar to Plasco, but not Plasco, because that obviously did not work. But Enercam is, is, is an option as to what they're doing in Edmonton. And it's something that I think can work. It's just a matter of finding it, how it can fit here, and how it can be most affordable for us to use. But just looking down the road and seeing Durham, which may or may not produce electricity, let's be honest, um, I don't know if that's the best fit for us. Okay, David Brown, I asked you the question. You get the last 30 seconds. Thank you, Mark. Uh, this needs to be a top priority for the next councillor in Rideau Goldburn. Waiting around for other decisions to be made at other locations in the province doesn't work for us. Every day, hundreds of tons of garbage are being dumped in our ward. The next councillor needs to aggressively pursue an environmentally friendly, sustainable solution that doesn't leave our ward 
with Garbage Mountain. Okay. We're now going to move to a couple of questions uh, where uh, there won't be any debate, but I'll, each a I'll ask each of the candidates to answer the question. Uh, you'll each have one minute to do that. Uh, so the first question is, uh, what's one big idea you have that will improve the lives of local residents? Scott Moffat, we'll start with you. Well, I think, big idea, geez, that's, <laughs> the, I think what you have to look at in the next term of council is the official plan and how we're going to look at the official plan for the next four years, how we're going to develop that, because that sets out the planning for the next 20, 30 years. And I think we need to be more realistic with our official plan as to what it means, as to what it is for residents. Right now, I think it's a little misleading. We look at, we use it as a sort of a cap for residents, and it needs to be more of a guiding principle that allows residents to understand what to expect in their communities. And that goes for rural Ottawa, that goes for suburban, that goes for, for urban Ottawa. But certainly, uh, having a, a major role in developing the official plan and making sure that it responds to rural needs, it responds to agricultural issues in terms of land protection for agricultural purposes, um, the growth in our villages, uh, growth throughout urban boundary expansion. These things all need to be looked at, and I think that needs to be a key priority for how we look at the next term of council. Okay, thank you. David Brown, same question to you. You've got 60 seconds. Well, residents have told me what will make their lives better, and that's smoother roads. In a report released by the city in 2017, 75% of Ottawa's roads required attention. Now, as we alluded to earlier, there's an annual $70 million infrastructure funding gap. Part of that is roads. Number one priority for all rural councillors, and, and urban councillors would benefit from this as well, is taking the federal gas tax fund and using that money to start fixing Ottawa's roads. Out in the rural area, we have limited access to public transportation but most people drive cars. It's a simple fact of living in rural Ottawa. But we shouldn't have to drive down roads like Roger Stevens in North Gore, Barnsdale, Fallowfield Road in the northern part of the uh, riding or the ward, and continue to drive on them without any sustainable plan to fix them. Waiting around for 10 more years for the city to fill the infrastructure gap, it's not responsible. That's something that needs to end. Okay. One more question. We'll start with you, David Brown. Would you support the creation of a women's bureau at Ottawa City Hall? And what other steps would you take to encourage and, and promote diversity? Thanks, Mark. Uh, yes, I would support a women's bureau at City Hall. I think that if women in Ottawa feel that this will help move their agenda forward, then that's something that council should stand behind. But when the Bureau is created, we need to make sure that it has a clearly stated and outlined goal of where they want to be moving forward. And that's something Council needs to make sure that it's, it's well, well enshrined and that Council helps move that forward. To uh, help promote diversity, well, we need to make sure that we are looking, and youth I think is a, an underrepresented group in the City of Ottawa, we need to make sure that there are more programs for youth to get in and take advantage of learning and skills opportunity. I know working on farms growing up, I gained a huge amount of experience, which I think helped me working in the political world. So I'd like to see something more uh, along the lines of encouraging youth to be able to get into city programs, build those workable skills up, which will help them exceed uh, in their future. Okay, Scott Moffat, same question. You've got one minute as well. Uh, thank you. I was pleased to support and, and speak to Councillor Deans and Councillor McKenney on this because I think it's an important issue. And I, I had spent some time doing a bit of research on this too because when I, at first glance, when I first saw it, I'm like, well, I'm sure there has to be more parity in the upper levels of city than, than people are alluding to. But actually looking at the entire uh, Sunshine List, realizing there's about only 30% of women positions in that, on that sunshine list and the majority of those 30% happen to be on the bottom end, closer to 100,000 than above 125. I think there is something there and, and, and I think it behooves council to, to work with that, not necessarily saying that we need more bureaucracy but looking with our HR department and seeing what are the barriers, are there things that are holding people back. I want to make sure that we're giving the best people the best jobs at the City of Ottawa. I want to make sure the best staff are rising to the top. And if there's impediments along the way from gender or diversity or your background for whatever reason, I think we need to know those so we can understand we can have the best city. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're going to move to the closing statements now for Rito Goulburn Ward, and we're going to do those in the opposite order of the opening statements. So we'll start with David Brown. You've got one minute. Thank you very much, Mark, and thank you very much for moderating this debate between Scott and I. My message is simple. I want to represent the residents of Rideau-Goulburn at City Hall. 
I don't want to represent City Hall to the residents in Rideau Goulburn. This is a change that I think needs to happen to make sure our voices are heard, that our agenda is being aggressively pursued, and that's a promise that I promise uh, I will deliver on. Okay, thank you. Closing statement now for Scott Moffat. You also have one minute. Great, thank you, Mark. The last eight years have been, you know, a very exciting experience for myself to be here, to be able to rise to a position where I can chair a committee and to take a, a major role in some of the files that impact rural Ottawa. Uh, certainly using my experience and listening to residents, we've managed to, to, to you know, have some tough files that we worked through. Site alteration bylaw was something recently that we that we worked on that we addressed the issues uh, at, uh, at the Agricultural Affairs Committee and also the Hard Rock, you know, saving Real Cart Raceway from potential closure and seeing that progress to a point where it's now going to save jobs in rural Ottawa and be a thriving part of rural Ottawa. Uh, these are important factors. You know, investing money in roads, I know we talked about that a lot today. We've done a lot in roads. More money has been sent to Rita in the last four years than any other ward. And that will continue because it is a priority and it, we have to be focused on what is the best for rural Ottawa and I'm going to deliver that. All right, thank you. Thank you both for being part of the debate. Best of luck to you in the rest of the campaign. And uh, thank you for watching this debate for Rito Goulburn Ward. And I'll remind you that Election Day is October the 22nd in Ottawa, and we'll have live coverage of the results and analysis of what that will mean for the next four years in our community right here on Rogers TV and also on 1310 News. I hope you can join us then. Thank you for watching the local campaign.